Well, as you can see behind me, I've been working on the dash pad, and I'm going to add up, try and edit up a video of what I've done so far, and then I'm going to start working on the steering column. The dash pad itself, this pad fits okay. It's got a little low spot here, and you'll see I'll, I'll edit up the video I did of doing it, and uh, you'll see what all the issues are. But yeah, I can might be able to put something underneath there just to lift that slightly that I'm not too concerned about but this the fit is so poor and you'll see that in the video and I talked to Eckler's where I got this from and uh, they're sending me another they told me to do a return I've been on the phone with them three or four times probably close to two hours of time on the phone with them and uh Finally got them to agree to exchange it, you know, and I don't know if the new one's going to be any better or not. I mean, the, the quality fit is the poorest I've ever seen. It's not usable. It's 100% not usable. It just doesn't fit. But anyway, I'm going to edit up some, some video, and then we're going to tear into the steering column. So... Just kind of wanted to put a video up, let you know I am working on the car. I'm not doing nothing. I'm just kind of at a standstill from this instrument pod fiasco, you know, the dash pad fiasco. You know, that what I've I I could send that to just dashes and have it redone, but I've heard some horror stories on costs. You, they give you a price, you send it to them, and then they do it, and then they give you a whole nother price that's three times higher. And uh, I'm not into dealing with people like that. I've had several people tell with the same, same exact story. They say they do stellar work, but they're slow and they price gouge. And uh, so we're going to try and uh, see if Eckler's will get the straightened out with a better one. And if not, we'll go from there. I'll, I'll worry about it from there. I can install a dash without this pad. That's not an issue. And I can get this one all glued up on here and uh, reinstall this in the car, less that. And if I, if all else has to, well, I'll just eat it and send that to, to Just Dashes. This, I think I said in the video, weighs quite a bit more than that one because that one's, uh, I think, PC, uh, PVC or ABS or something that it's molded over and that one's steel and uh, that one actually fits here pretty good so and I think that's in the video too but this is the next day you know like I say I've been talked to him twice on the phone at length yesterday and once against again today so hopefully we get this uh, straightened out I'm gonna box it up send it back and when I get the new one we'll We'll try it out and hopefully it works that by that time this should be in the car. So I've been getting a few things out. I got the speaker grill. I picked up some uh, contact cement as you remember when I showed, you know, it was just brush painted on here with contact cement to hold the pad on. And I picked up, well I didn't, I found, I went to the hardware when I bought that and I was short on some foam brushes so I bought a few foam brushes and I got home and I found my whole box of stuff but this is a size brush I'll probably use these are the little clips where that molding attaches so I'll probably put these back on before I install a dash these are all hold the dash in the car I ordered this this came in this is for the speedometer cable and true to Murphy's law right after I received that I was when I found my paint brushes there I found my speedometer cable lube and I have about six of these I uh, bought them at a swap meet some years ago I think I gave the guy I don't know 25 cents a piece for them and like I say I got six of them and uh, this works pretty good on speedometer cable uh, cables I used it on uh, the Bel Air and uh, it's it's local here. You can see there, Livonia, Michigan. So this is a local product here. This Livonia isn't too far from me. I'm about 15, 20 minute drive from Livonia. So I'll probably use this as what, you know, this, this is new. 
this is old but this is pretty good I don't know we'll see we'll see this is unopened I may may open it may use it we will see when I get to that point I'm going to lubricate the speedometer cable before the dash goes back in and I got my liquid chrome paint too and I'm gonna paint all the chrome at the same time so when I get the steering column apart after the dashes and I'll tackle this I just got too much going right now so when once the dash is in I can work on getting this off that off paint all this stuff up I'll paint this because this will have to go on before these two go back on and I'll paint that and that bezel at exactly the same time hopefully it turns out good but anyway today is I'm going to clean the junk out of the trunk and uh, get that dash pad out and start cutting it to fit you know so it's, it's quite a bit longer I, I say people ask me why I tried to take this off in one piece without destroying it there's two reasons why one I can use it to help me template or pattern make sure I get the new dash pad trim correctly and two I've had about five people ask if they could have it because it's better than what they have by leaps and bounds and that is the main reason why and as far as who gets it I'll probably have to put some names in a hat and pull them out and whoever I pull out will will get it but I have had numer numerous people ask if they could have that uh, old dash pad so once it's all done then I'll work on uh, you know getting that off and it will go in the box a new one came in to ship and I doubt shipping is going to be cheap whoever gets the hat draw if they don't want to pay the shipping I'll draw someone else's name until someone's willing to pay the shipping shipping is just horrifically expensive nowadays since the pandemic wouldn't it be nice as easy as if it was to put the old uh, cover back on well we got the new one out here and we're going to open up the box and start uh fitting it up I had carried the box around here from the trunk and I had those bits and pieces hanging from the light fixture and this one I knocked down it was hanging here and it hit my finger and put a huge gouge in it so I had to raid the first aid kit yeah it bled pretty good it felt like I got an electrical shock fortunately it hit here and didn't hit over here on anything I was really lucky so I took everything down that was hanging above the dash area so nothing gets knocked down on it. And that's the last thing I need. So I'm going to try and uh, put this thing over, rest it on something on this here so it sits fairly the way it sits in the car. Here's the new pad and you can see how much further out this goes than what it needs to be. So looking at the original pad, you can see the original markings. And you can see how it's trimmed out around the defroster ducts. And there's also a number right there, does it? Let me see if I can wipe it out and we can see what it says. There we go. It looks like, I'm going to guess, it says KZ21066. That looks like a Z. I don't know. It might be a 7, but no, it's definitely a Z, maybe. I don't see if there's... Yeah, there's no numbers on this side down here, but that is the number there. Maybe I'll, I don't know, save that or not, but I doubt it. We'll leave that on this pad for the, the next owner. You can see where the trim that goes on here. So all this is covered to here. Well, actually a little further, but, but I still want to get this as neat and tidy and original as possible. And this one has, I don't know if these are going to, this one has five bolts here. And this one I think had three holes in the dash and two bolts holding it on. Yeah, it's got three holes in the dash. So we may have to do some things there with that. And you can see how they just used two bolts and these don't look like they can be slid in here all oh, little looks like I can slide out the ones I don't need okay yeah they're in there 
kind of loose and they're in elongated holes so I think I'll just leave the ones that fit maybe these three take these two out and hopefully it'll fit and then the that plastic speaker grill bit goes in here and then we just brush on some contact cement on both surfaces let it dry for a few minutes and then uh stick it together and once it's stuck it's stuck but anyway i want to get it all trimmed out and fit first so i'm going to work on that i got to go and find a good pair of scissors and get a sharp exact or a razor blade out there's some ink stamping right there too that states 1966 and it looks like there was something else right here but i can't really tell what it was but it definitely clearly states 1966 there i took the nuts off and these don't slide out and these look like they'll line up with the holes in the dash so I'm going to cut these off with my Dremel very carefully pull them out as far as I can so I can whack them off as close to this as I possibly can you know I've never done a dash pad before this is a first so we're going to learn together and hopefully I don't screw things up and there's nothing really on YouTube for replacing one of these and these really, when they when I bought this, they tell me they're not show quality. And they're really not. There's some minor little, the other one was really bad. The first one I got, I sent it back. And then they sent me this one. And then when I got it, I noticed a little imperfection there and a little imperfection there. But they said they won't, wouldn't take it back again. They told me either return it for a refund or I'm done because in... There's only one company that makes these. Yeah, everyone says Just Dashes, but one supplier supplies everybody. So it doesn't matter where I get it from. They're all going to be the same. And uh, it's going to look, you know, a lot better than the original. That's for darn sure. I mean, it's minimal. And this may come out as a car, you know, because that speaker grill will push this up a little bit. And it may work that out. This may work out after it's installed in the car for a little while. But first, I got to cut those, these two off. And then I'm going to fit it up. And then I'll go around and trim everything that uh, needs to come off so it fits in the dash. I'm going to see if I can find some square tubing the size right here. And then sharpen it up really sharp and use it like a punch. You know, put it against a block of wood and take a hammer and tap it and see if I can cut square, perfect square holes like that. Cutting this out, yeah, that's no big deal. I can do that. But I want the square holes to be nice for here where those, that's where these clip things go in to hold that molding on the the windshield. Now I want all this installed before I put the dash on it. I don't want to have to fight with this underneath the dash here with it installed. So basically this dash is going to be together when I put it in. I'm going to take this off and uh, in fact I'm just going to take it off right now because I don't want it in my way having to fight with it and I got to put that defroster vent thing on too. So that will be when the dash is ready to go in. That's how this goes in, just like that. You can see where the screw holes go. I may attach that just after I get the, the pad on because those screw holes will be exposed. And then when I install a dash, this will be in place and I won't have to fight to get, get it up in here. Uh, that came out after, after I took the dash out. So it's got to go in before the dash goes back in. I couldn't get it out from under the dash with the dash in. So literally, I got to get this in place first, but I'm not worried about that right now. I want to get the dash pad on. Let's get to work on it. I cut two of these screws off, and I was putting, going to put it up here on the dash, and if I hold it up to the dash where it needs to be, those screw holes are off a little bit, maybe an eighth inch or so. I hate to hog them out, but I'll put it through the holes here best I can. Sorry, I'm flipping the camera all over heck and gone here. If I can get it back in the there. And it hits. See how it's hitting there? And it's clearing there. Yeah, it's definitely got to go to the right. 
so I'm gonna have to these unfortunately I can't move these in here as much as I've tried now well that one moves a little bit but I fear damaging the foam see these are elongated holes where you can slide these to make them fit where you want to these are not these are like adhered in there and I don't want to take a chance in messing the pad up so I guess I'm gonna to have to hog these holes out I give this dash pad quality you know because I had to cut two bolts off now I got to hog out the holes and you know just to get it to fit where it's supposed to fit I'm gonna give it about a five right now and it may go downhill from there but yeah I'm not thrilled with the quality of this reproduction part at all so I gotta and I, when I cut these off I did a little at a time so I wouldn't get them hot I didn't want to melt them down into the foam I was going to use the Dremel to hog these out but I just opted to go with a little rat tail file instead and I'm going to do them a little at a time and then try the dash and just get them to where I need to get them I hate doing this but if I'm going to put that new pad on I don't have much of a choice there isn't much of an option here the holes are hogged out as much as I hated to do that that was about the only thing I could really do short of not using that pad so I'm going to go around and touch up all the repaint the inside lip of the holes and then let that dry for an hour or two and then I'm going to start on installing the pad I was checking the fit of the speaker grill between the two dashes too and I pushed this one on the new dash and then I brought it over here because it felt like there's a little bit of distance between the foam and this but there is on this too that's kind of the way it'll fit this dash is bowed like that and bowed it's bowed like this right now and it needs to be dashed this this will be pushed you know it'll be the opposite curve of what it is now and when i held it up there just held these through the holes these screws without screwing them before i touched the paint up and then when i pushed it down i didn't have the grill in though but i just wanted to test fit it i just put the fasteners on this back side here finger tight and I got the speaker grill kind of setting in that plastic thing and you can see when I hold this down over how it bends over so I'm going to definitely have to clamp this and I got to really pull it to get this part here you know beyond where where um, that trim goes that trim if you look at this dash was coming right to the edge of this cutout right here. I mean it was right on the, the edge of that and I just got to kind of pull it as I do that and it fits pretty darn good. So what I think I'm going to do tonight or today is I'm going to pull it up and clamp it all the way across with this glue and leave this part unglued until tomorrow after this is all bonded down. And then when I glue this, I can maybe clamp it over here. I don't know. We'll, we'll kind of see. Like I say, I've never done one of these before. But it looks like it's going to look pretty good. That bump really does mostly come out there. But I'm going to wait to trim it until it's adhered. Because I can just go from behind with a razor blade and, and cut it out. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, it's not, you know, they're not, it's by no means a perfect match to the original. It's a reproduction, but it actually fits pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. That'll be nice. And uh, anyway, let me uh, just horse with it here for a little bit. I might, might clamp it for a little while before I glue it and just see how it settles. You can't get this trim obviously to set down on here the way it's supposed to because these tabs but I can hold it up here and get a pretty good clue how it's going to look and I think that's going to come out pretty darn good. Uh, um, you can see how it like pockets up though so I'm definitely going to glue this surface first here. I just don't you know that I can because when I try and clamp it, it it pockets so I'm going to have to glue this and then I'll uh, glue this up here 
and that will glue much easier once this is glued. That is pulled up here as far as it'll go. And it almost looks, yeah, I think that looks pretty darn good. That's about the angle of the dash. Maybe about like that. I'm pretty happy with the way this, this looks here. So now it's just a matter of making sure it all fits everywhere else. The only problem I see is this end is not formed like it should be, so we'll see what we can do with that. It's got multiple curves, so it kind of wants to go every which way, but it'll eventually form out. I'm just going to, I might, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's just, just going to have to play. I think maybe once I'm start gluing it, it'll start going on, you know, once this is glued. I don't know, like I say, I've never done one of these before, but I'll show you what the, what, what I'm running into over here. Just so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. This this is too far this way here and too far. It's like this whole thing needs to go like that. And I don't know that I can. Might get the other dash pad that slides on here and just see how it looks. You can kind of see this is wider. That's the screw that holds that bezel on. And when I pull this down where it should go, it's over that. So maybe, it'll, maybe I can glue it like that, but this, see how, see how that is? This was like that originally, but see how it is over here? It's a good quarter inch this far away. This whole part needs to go back. So I don't know, maybe I can, I don't know, we'll just, I'll just horse with it for a little while and see what I can do. I was just seeing how this would fit if that's going to be in the way. You know, I just don't want to glue this on and have that things not uh, fit. So I'm putting this on there. And that fits the dash pad on both sides really well. So I'm going to get the top instrument panel piece and see how that looks on there. I give the fit of this a 1. So I'll show you what the issue is. See these holes where the where it slides over those, look at how, just look at them. I mean, these two aren't, that middle one isn't so bad, but yeah. Typical reproduction for you, so I don't know, I might have to take a screwdriver and clean some of that out because this, the original one just falls on and off. This one doesn't even, doesn't even go on. This is the original one. This weighs like three times more than what that replacement one weighs. This is much, the original is much better quality. Can't see what I'm doing here. But there, that's pushed all the way on. That's how easy it should go on. I should weigh these. See what the difference in weight. This is significantly heavier than the reproduction one. This is probably just cheap cardboard or plastic. I mean, this thing just, it's just no weight to it at all. So, yeah, I don't, th these replacement dashes are not all are cracked up to be. Try and uh, salvage what you have if you can. Well, I'm getting it on in place, but yeah, it's, it's so low here that it's coming down into the, trim on the dashboard. It's just really not impressed. Not impressed one bit. I can even take this pad totally out of the way there and I can't get that to be up to where it's supposed to be. I guess it's just a really poor quality reproduction part. Issue number one. See how it's tight there? And it got a big gap, and yeah, I can push it, really push it down, and and get it to somewhat fit. But that does, that isn't what the major problem is. The major problem is back here. And let me just kind of show you. And it's touching here, 
to about here. And that's about it. And then here, look at that. I can put my finger in between there when it's back to touching over here. Not, not uh, meeting up with the dashboard. So you can uh, clearly see the instrument panel between there. And I can pull this as hard as I can and push that down to where it's, you know, matches up over here. And it's still got this gap that you can see in there. I can pull this out, push it down. It's still got the gap. No matter what I do, I have a gap here I can put my fingers through. And the other issue is these screw holes. Here, I'll just take this off for a moment. How do I know where, if these are exactly where they need to be? Look at that. That's even kind of lifting there. The, the vinyl is. But, you know, I'm, I'm, and it's lifting here, too. It's coming, coming undone here. It's coming undone here. And how do I know if these are going to be where these need to go? You know, I don't want to have a bunch of holes here. Um, and again, I don't want to pay all this shipping costs. This one here is a lot heavier. I don't know what the deal is with um, with your products there, but this one is kind of twisted up, but it fits. It actually does. Look at that. And this is a tore up dash pad. And yet, I don't have a gap there. So when you look at these two dash pads, you can see clearly the original one has a curve. Let me get them kind of lined up here. You can clearly see the original one curves out more than what this one does. I don't know if I can, how I can show that any, it doesn't really line up like that, but it, you can physically see it when you're standing here looking at them. This actually is more pronounced like that than what this one is. So I just want this to, to go on, you know. I haven't glued this pad on yet because I wanted to fit everything up before I did anything. And that was another thing too, was these, there's five screws that hold this on this pad and there was only three in the dash. So I had to cut two of them off because I'm not gonna punch more holes in my dashboard. And to get it to fit, I had to elongate these holes because these screws don't move in that channel at all, unlike the original ones. See how you can move them? So that way you could get the dash pad lined up. This was actually overhanging to about, actually I take that back, it was that way too far. And I had to hog the holes this way to get that to fit. But that's not my problem. I, I'm pretty sure I can make this work. This is the second one of these you sent me. It does have a imperfection right there. Does it show up? So it's not perfect, but this, this is unusable completely 100% unusable. Just to give you the heads up, I am going to wait to glue this up until after I get the new, the next dash pad, just in case there's any issues. So it may be a couple of weeks, you know, they're saying Wednesday, I shipped you one back. <clears throat> Wednesday they should have it. Who knows how long they'll take to get the new one off, but it'll probably be a minimum of a week, I bet. And so it'll be couple weeks before I start reinstalling this or maybe some far and few between videos because really I'm waiting on the interior I'm getting excuses on that now and uh, you know the interior kit I ordered I'm starting to get all you know they have people off from COVID and stuff which I suspect is could be very well true but it's been a month beyond what they promise now on shipping and uh, I know how that goes so who knows when that'll be here. I might just clean the original up and put it back in. But this, uh, <clears throat> this I'm going to wait to glue up, like I say, until I get the a pad that's a little more better fit or something I can make fit. I just don't want to glue this up and then have to rip it off again. 
So that's kind of where I'm at. I have to say thank you for watching this video in particular. And uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to see that dash eventually done up, subscribe to my channel by hitting that 348 icon that pops up there. And thank you for watching my videos.